Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sislawati. I'm an excellent Barbie enthusiast with decades of business experience. This video is part 3 of my Palbia Artificial Intelligence series. In part 1 and 2, I have shown you how we can use key influencer visual as well as decomposition tree to generate insight with speed and accuracy. If you haven't seen them, please do check them out. You can find the links in the description below. In this video, I will continue to use the same PBIX report and I will shift our focus to the third page, which focuses on anomaly detection in Power BI. Let's look at our third page, the anomaly detection page. This page has so many cool features, which I'm sure you will love. For example, we have a Q&A visuals over here where you can type any questions or try one of these suggestions and a chart will automatically get produced. We also have line charts with dots. These dots are anomaly detection. So days where sales are particularly low is highlighted with these dots or when it's exceptionally high, it's also highlighted with the dots. And then on the right, we have smart narrative. There are some words that is auto-generated by Power BI so that you can just read them. Yeah, and most importantly, when other visuals over here get selected, it just automatically updates everything else on the right. So we have simple bar charts over here and we have four in one bar charts on the top. How cool is this? Well, I'm going to show you how we can recreate this page from scratch later on in this video. But before we get there, let me show you each one of these features in detail so you can understand how powerful they are and how useful they are in helping you to generate insights with speed and accuracy. Let's take a deep dive together and play around with page 3 anomaly detection. Let's explore the Q&A visuals together. You can type any questions about your data in here. For example, I'm going to type one percentage and it says 64.6. .6. Now it can be expanded. We can say by product and let's add some more with line chart and watch that. And then not only that, you can also say by manager. Now you've got two lines. How cool is this? Let's say you want a table instead of line chart. No problem. You can just delete this with line chart and just type table. And voila, isn't that awesome? Next, let's look at our line charts. Line charts in Power BI is so cool because you can do so much with it. Firstly, you can drill up or down. For example, this is currently displaying daily sales. And if you hit drill up, it will show you monthly sales. Hit it one more time and you will see yearly sales. Now, to go back, just expand all the way down and you're back to daily sales. We are in daily sales view. Let's click drill up one more time so that we can see sales by month, September, October, and November. And you can see that sales has been going up and you may be wondering why. Now, the good news is you can right click and analyze so that Power BI can explain the increase. Look at this. We are now getting automated charts comparing October and November sales by product so that we can see which product has gone up. Now, there are a couple of options in here. You can click show largest changes or untick it. If it's unticked, then all products are being displayed. Whereas if you tick it, then only the products with the biggest change are displayed. There is also option to choose chart type. For example, this is rainbow chart, which is really useful because you get sales by product in one month being sorted so that the biggest sales is on top lower sales is at the bottom and then you get to see the comparison month on month and you get to see that okay the green is growing but still number one and then this black color which is tablets used to be number three it is now number two in terms of sales ranking you can see that has grown quite significantly so it's really up to you which chart type do you want power bi to display now if you scroll down there are also other options other charts that display the analysis of sales by product category, for example, or by what is this campaign name or 
what else do we have by pipeline steps and etc etc so it's really nice that everything is automatically created now if you hover to the month where sales has been going down and you right click when you analyze Power BI can explain the decrease. So similar to previously, but this time around, of course, we are focusing on where are we seeing a month on month decline in sales. Isn't this awesome? Now let's drill down and look at the daily view. You can see some dots in here, which highlights days where sales are particularly low and days where sales are particularly high. These are what they call potential anomalies. Now, the good thing about Power BI is you can click the dots. And when you click it, an anomaly pane pop up on the right and it provides possible explanation. For example, in here, it provides the explanation that maybe it's software, which is really low on that day and therefore may have lowered the overall revenue want. Now, sometimes you click the dots and you don't see anything, for example, like that. That's not very useful. It is saying that Power BI couldn't find any significant explanation for this anomaly. So maybe it's just low everywhere, not a particular product, not a particular person, not a particular location. So don't worry about that. It's fine as well. Next, let's look at our smart narrative over here. It is saying that at 1.6 million, November had the highest revenue one and was 31% higher than July. Now we can't really cross check this information easily because this is daily sales. So let's drill up. Now we can see monthly sales and this is November. This is July. Okay, it makes sense. November has the highest sales and July is low and Yep, 31% lower than November. Okay, that makes sense. And across 12 months, revenue won range from 1.2 to 1.6. Yep, we can see that. Okay, so what's also great about this smart narrative is the fact that it interacts. Yeah, so if I filter on low Spencer, everything written over here is associated with low Spencer. Uh, likewise, if I select tablets, then this is summarizing tablets related sales or revenue one. So it's saying, for example, for tablet in December was the month with the highest revenue one and was 189% higher than April. Isn't that awesome to be able to get the insight summarized in words over here and can be updated automatically. Also, one thing of note, you can change the format. Yeah, you can click that. And for example, if you don't want to see two decimal places and just want to see one, just change it and hit save. Very, very easy and simple. Yeah, I don't want to see decimal places, for example. Okay, zero decimal places and done. The last visuals that I want to explore with you is this four-in-one bar chart. Yes, this is not four visualization. This is just one visualization. It's interlinked together and you can link whatever you want, either the name or the bar charts over here and everything on the right just get filtered. Isn't this awesome? Let me now show you how we can recreate page three from scratch. Hit the plus button to create a new page. We have page three is now created. And let's get started by first creating the Q&A visuals. Hit that and then bring it down and drag it. And we're done. Can you imagine? It's really as simple as that. And let's just test it to make sure that it works. So one percentage. There you go. By manager. There you go. With line chart. There you go. All done. How about by month? Voila. Okay. That's really awesome, isn't it? Now, say for example, you don't want by manager, just delete. Done. Now let's add pack by manager. And voila, all done. Now, of course, if you want to, you can make it bigger so that it's clearer, yeah? So that's done. And if you want to reset, just delete. And now it's got reset to the original. Let's leave it like that. 
Next, let's recreate this line chart. So go to page three and then in the visualization, hit line chart, which is that, and then just add the fields. So what's the fields? We want date, the opportunity calendar date, put that into X axis, and then we want revenue one and just click and drag. And that's pretty much it. Oh, don't forget to turn on find anomalies. And in here, there are options. The default is 70. You can make it 90, for example, and then hit apply. So notice the higher the sensitivity, the more the dots. So if you reduce it to 50, for example, and hit apply, then you get to see less dots in here. But the shaded area will become higher because it means that it will tolerate variances in sales within this range. So the higher the sensitivity, the lower is the range that it will tolerate. So 100% minutes needs to be in that line. And if it's 90, for example, then it is within that range only. Yeah. Now, so that's our line charts done. We also have in this page a slicer on top. Yeah. I'm just going to copy this and put that in here. There you go. Don't sync because I want to make sure that this visual is filtered on the same date range. Okay. That's it. Now you can right click and analyze, explain, increase. Everything is automatically created for you. And then over here, when it's going down, this analyze, explain the decrease, it's also automatically there. Really, really nice feature from Power BI. And the drill up and drill down, it's there already. You don't have to do anything. It's all preset up. Next, let me show you how we can recreate a smart narrative box like this. Go to page three, go to insert smart narrative. And you're done. Huh? Like that? Yes, it's just like that. But hold on. This comment is different. This is focusing on daily narrative. Whereas previously in here, this is focusing on monthly commentaries. So why is it not the same? Okay. First, when you generate the smart narrative matters, because our charts in here is currently displayed as daily charts, that's why the smart narrative focuses on giving us a daily commentary. If we want the commentary to be monthly, then what we should do is drill up first so that it's on a monthly settings and then just click delete and then just click smart narrative one more time. And notice now the commentary is focusing on monthly trends, monthly movement, and we're pretty much done. Like what I said before, if you want to, you can change the format, for example, reduce the decimal place just by clicking the underlined item. So when you hit save, that's now formatted nicely. For example, I don't like the decimal place, just click that numbers and then hit zero and save and much neater. All done. Next, let's recreate these visuals. A simple stack bar charts look at that that's grayed out and then y-axis is just products x-axis is revenue one really simple so click stack bar chart put it down here and then we want product put it there and then we want revenue one and that's it all done hold on the color is not the same in here it is a different blue Whereas in here, it is almost black. What do we do? So click the visualization and go to the formatting pane. Over here, there is option to change the color of the bar chart. And now we are done. Next, let's recreate this four in one chart. Now, notice something when you click these visuals, look to the right and that's the one which is grayed out, which is a clustered bar chart. And to make it four in one, all we need to do is ensure that the small multiples are filled in with product category. The Y axis is manager because that's manager. The X axis is revenue one because that dollar amount is associated with revenue one. So 
Now go into page three. Hit the cluster bar chart. Revenue one should go into X axis. Manager should go into Y axis. And then the product should go into the small multiples. And voila, we are done. Hold on, you may say, oh, that's messy. Let's clean out what we don't need to see. So very, very simple. Just go to Y axis and then just turn off the title. Yeah, now that's gone. Yeah. Similarly, go to X axis and turn off the title so that we don't need to see this revenue one. Yeah. And then finally, let's change the color make the color the same blue so go to where are you hold on one second let's just collapse this we want the bar and make it blue and now we are done i hope you have enjoyed learning about anomaly detection and will be able to use it in your future report so you can leverage power bi intelligence capabilities to generate clear insight with speed and accuracy I'll post the link where you can download the BBIX file for practice in the description below. In my next video, I will show you how we can link up all the pages together using patterns and bookmarks. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave me some comments, say hello, share your learning journey, as your feedback and comments are the things that would motivate me to continue creating more tutorials in the future. See you next time.